the mating inequality that's going to come out of this dearth of men in college poses an existential risk to our economy and our society. What? You may have seen this video from the Michael Smirconis Show on CNN with his guest Scott Galloway, a marketing professor at NYU, trending, and the multitude of response articles that followed. Hi, I'm Margaret Mead. Let's step through some of the claims being made and see if we agree. Women make up nearly 60% of college students with men at 40%. That's the largest gender gap in the history of American higher education. This is true. Fewer and fewer men are choosing college as a pathway after high school. There are a myriad of reasons, but the statistics presented here are accurate. The pandemic played a role in magnifying the numbers, but the trend is not solely based on the challenges that all college students have faced in the last few years. The other point I need to make here is that these statistics only reflect numbers for community and four-year colleges. Trader vocational statistics are not reflected in these numbers. Men still outnumber women in trade schools. According to the Common App, in college applications for the most recent school year, women outpaced men 3.8 million to 2.8 million. So where have all the men gone and why? It is not just the application numbers that have led to this decline in enrollment by men. Men are 20% more likely to drop out of college than women. Emphasizing the turn away from education by men, we know that men are dropping out of high school at a rate that is 40% higher than women. We can and will do an entire video on the subject of why men are not going to college. For now, let's stay focused on the Schmirkanish Galloway video we have been sharing. What case are they making for the impact of this reduction in male representation in colleges? The most dangerous person in the world is a broke and a lone male, and we are producing too many of them. The mating inequality that's going to come out of this dearth of men in college poses an existential risk to our economy and our society. There are a few leaps in logic here, and the presentation of very little proof. First, that if men are not educated, they will have no opportunity for a positive future, or that more men will turn to dangerous behaviors to prove their worth. Dr. Galloway doesn't give statistics on the percentage of men who don't pursue college who will turn dangerous or, more importantly, the percentage of those men who will fill roles that don't require education to be successful in their field, community, or family. Second, that men leaving education will throw the balance of stabilizing relationships out of whack and leave society unbalanced. I am not quite ready to go that far. Let's see where they take us. And the reality is college graduate women aren't interested in mating with men who don't have college degrees. Okay, I know that is not the first thing that comes to my mind as being the most significant impact of reduced education levels by males in our society. So much of everything in life is measured in stereotypes and generalizations, and this particular generalization is interesting. We know that women look for success in their mates. How they measure that success is pretty individual. But since we know that college graduates make significantly more money over the course of their lives, reason would tell us that the fewer men earning big money, the fewer men will be available to women who view success financially. There is no discussion of the possibility that society would evolve and that the way women evaluate potential partners would change or that this mating inequality would lead to a swap in the measure men take of women's financial success. In other words, will the measures of success be changed in society? We know that the continued and growing lack of men being involved in and seeming to value education will cause societal change. That change may very well be detrimental. Listen. If you look at the most unstable, violent societies in the world, they all have one thing in common. They have young, depressed men who aren't attaching to work, aren't attaching to school, and aren't attaching to relationships. America is not the only country facing these issues, and we can learn from those societies that have begun to deal with these levels of inequality. At the same time, we can't discount that men remain the majority in the power positions found in industry, government, and education. And we all can have an impact on the future of education for men. We want every member of society to be able to continue their growth in their abilities and knowledge. 
we know that people are better as individuals in society when each of us can pursue futures that allow us to be tied to our community, be a part of a family, and trust that we can positively contribute to both. So if men are falling out of higher education, we need to study the why and how. Identifying the why and creating interventions and alterations that will help us figure out how we can impact the dynamic of the missing males in college. The topic is interesting. And our inability to provide the resources and encourage men to go to college is gonna result in, in us producing too many of the most dangerous cohort in the world. Interestingly, it has taken society this long to see a trend that began 50 years ago. While the pandemic did make the problem worse, the reality is that higher education hasn't attracted men at the same rate as women since the early 1990s. Recognition of the problem is the first step. Sharing theories without offering solutions is trendy today, but it isn't beneficial. Solving the problem is the most critical step, and that will begin with an evaluation of the why and how. The time used in this video could have had a much more significant impact if that was the focus of the time spent on national TV. Men need to move forward with their high school and college educations, be that community college, trade school, or four-year university. This will allow each man to increase their own possibilities in a world that continues to change. The overarching concept that men are leaving higher education while women are drawn to college is correct. The impacts of these changes are yet to be determined. We can all work to make sure that men are comfortable and supported as they pursue education and that the prediction of marital inequality becomes inaccurate. But that is just my opinion. Give us your views in the comments below. If you found any of this information useful, please hit the like button or perhaps consider subscribing. And if you have any questions, let us know in the comments down below.